Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا رسول حيا رسول حيّر الفراخ خيّر الفراخ الله أكبر الله أكبر لا We seek Allah's protection against the influences of the shaitan who has been rejected and outcast. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduh rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm Mubarak. We give open testimony there is only one God who stands alone without any partners or associates. And it is he alone who deserves our worship. We further give open testimony that Muhammad the Prophet to whom the Quran is revealed is Allah's messenger, his slave servant. And he is the seal of the prophets. We pray the prayers of peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and all of those righteous servants that follow him and all else that follows this excellent greeting. Dear believers, I greet you. Assalamu alaikum wa ramadan mubarak. As always, I pray that Allah will guide my speech and my tongue, preventing me from errors and mistakes, acknowledging before I begin that any that I make of my own, I humbly ask for his forgiveness for them in advance, and that he leads me to a better understanding so that I won't make them again. And I further acknowledge before I beginning that any good that comes from this kuba, this talk, is not from me. It is from God alone, and we say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All the praises for God All the praise belongs to God All praise belongs to God Who is the Lord of all of the worlds And all systems of knowledge It's customary for me To remind you as I remind myself first The most important thing that we're ever going to do in this life Is to believe in God and develop our belief in the faith Meaning that we believe in him so much that our actions and deeds in this life reflects that we actually believe in him, that we do, we follow our belief with works that actually display our belief in God. We want to uh, remain conscious of him thereafter, remain conscious, believe, have faith in him, and then remain conscious of him and have the kind of consciousness of God, the conscious regard for him. That will prevent us from making the errors and mistakes that we make sometimes that cause stain on our souls and might prevent us from the best rewards in this life and keep us from the best reward for the hereafter. Dear believers in the one God, we're blessed for another Friday Salatul Jumah, congregational prayer, coming together for prayer reflections on our responsibility to our Creator and our responsibility to our own souls and having the opportunity to realign ourselves with God 
and seek his help, seek his forgiveness, seek his mercy, and seek his guidance so that we might, if we have fallen away from his path, move back to the path that is pleasing to him, or if we have been on the path, that he continues to give us guidance so that we can keep our feet on his path and that we can receive guidance from him so that God willing, we will be successful in this life and we will have the success in the hereafter. In fact, that we might be among those that God says in the Quran, uh, that on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day, highly glorified is he for the gift and the blessings that he has bestowed upon us in our past, all that he is bestowing on us even as I speak, and for all of the blessings that have yet to come. Particularly today, I would like to acknowledge, which I do often, the gift of the Quran, the book of God, that which should be recited and rehearsed and studied often. Um, God's word, period, all of revelation. Uh, we thank God for the gift of revelation and particularly the Quran. God says in the Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, with God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Ar-Rahman Alam al-Qur'an Qala qal insan Alam al-Hul bayan Sarak Allahul Adheem Ar-Rahman By the most merciful The most gracious Alam al-Hul Qur'an He has taught the Quran. Qala qal insan and created man. Adam al hul bayan. And he has taught him speech and given him intelligence. Sadaqallahu ladeem. This is the translation given by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. I was looking at this translation and and though it says Allah has taught the Quran, which he has, I recognize that Allah is always teaching Quran. God is teaching Quran. He is always teaching Quran to those who are laboring, striving to understand it. Those who are seeking for his help and opening his signs to them, he is always teaching Quran. So, a translation that I would offer, and Allah forgive me if I'm incorrect, but I would say that by the most gracious, the most merciful God, he is teaching, it is his teaching of the Quran which creates in man a mind developed by clear and evident signs that increases his intelligence and gives him intelligent speech. Whenever God shapes and molds your mind, our mind, my mind, our minds with his word. A few kubas ago, I talked about feeding ourselves the word of God and allowing the word of God shape and mold who we become. I talked about this reality that... Um, they say, you know, we talk, who is they? But they say 
You are what you eat. Whatever it is that you put in is what comes out. So they say garbage in, garbage out. Whatever it is you digest is what comes back out of you, right? So if in your mind you're feeding yourselves garbage, garbage comes out of your mouth through your speech. Garbage is how you think. Garbage is what you produce. If you are digesting conspiracy theories all the time, conspiracy theories is what comes out of you. If you are taking in hate speech, hate ideas, hate information, hate comes out of your mouth and hate is what you produce. But if you take in the word of God and it is shaping your mind and your thinking, it also then shapes what comes out of you and what you produce. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches through his mercy, through his, through his mercy, through his benevolence, when he opens up the Quran to you who are seeking his help, it begins to shape and mold your thinking and your mind. And it develops, <clears throat> it creates <clears throat> in the mind of man a heightened sense of intelligence that, has do that is done by God giving you his ayats, his signs that present clear and evident proofs. And as you grasp these concepts and ideas that God is giving you, it heightens your intelligence and it provides you with intelligent speech. And we say, Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen. The praises for God, all the praises for God. All the praises for God, all praise belongs to God who is the Rab, the Lord, which also means the best teacher. He is the teacher. He is the best teacher, the teacher of all of the worlds and all systems of knowledge. Dear believers, God says to us in the Quran, in Surah 17, he says, Verily this Quran doth guide to that which is most right. And it gives glad tidings to the believers who work deeds of righteousness that they shall have a magnificent reward from their Lord. And to those who refuse to believe in the hereafter or are meeting with their Lord, it pronounces to them that they have for them prepared a grievous penalty. God says to us in the Quran in the same surah, that was ayat 9, by the way. God says to us in the same surah, every man has their fate fastened to their own necks. On the day of judgment, we will bring out for them a scroll which they will see spread open. It will be said, read your own record. Sufficient is your own soul this day to make out an account against you. Who receives guidance or whoever will receive guidance, they receive it for his own benefit. And who decides to go astray does so 
to his own loss. No bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another, nor would we visit with our wrath anyone until we have sent a message, a messenger, excuse me, to give warning. When we decide to destroy a population, we first send a definite order to those among them that were given the good things of this life, and yet still they transgress so that the word is proven true against them, then we destroy them utterly. How many generations have been destroyed after Noah? And enough is your Lord to note and see the sins of his servants. If any do wish for the transitory things of this life, if their preference is for the transitory things of this life, God says we readily grant them such things as we will to such persons as we will. And in the end, have we provided hell for them? They will burn therein disgraced and rejected. Those whose preference or wish is for the things of the hereafter and they strive therefore with all due striving and have faith they are the ones whose striving is acceptable to Allah Allah says further in this same surah say O oh my Lord, let my entry be by the gate of truth and honor, and likewise my exit by the gate of truth and honor, and grant me from thy presence an authority to aid me. And when the help from your Lord comes, God says, say, Truth has now arrived and falsehood perished for falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. Sadaqallahu al-Azim and surely God speaks the truth. Dear believers, simply I just wanted in this first kutbah, this first part of the kutbah to remind us of the enormous blessing that we have received from God in the form of revelation. Whatever God has sent as revelation to his prophets for the benefit of and guidance and the help of man, we should appreciate it and we should study it and it should be part of our everyday reality. And we should know that God says that through his mercy and his, his, his bountifulness, his generosity, he teaches, he opens up the revelation and the signs that are in the book for us. And, when I, when, and, and, and please know that when I say the book, when I say the Quran, I'm not only talking to the words that are on the page of a hardbound book. But I'm also talking about the words, the signs that exist in the creation around us. I am also referring to the signs that exist within our own creation, this creation of us. I'm also referring to all of it, that there are signs in God's creation for those that will reflect on them and then come to understand those who study God's creation, they ponder his creation with the thought that they want God to help them to understand, to see the benefit of these signs that he has created for us. And when then God opens them up and he teaches us the meaning of these things, it becomes transformational in our thinking and it creates the insan, the man, the thinking mind that has been guided by God 
that has clear and evident proofs that shapes and molds the intellect and the speech of man. We should be grateful to him. And God tells us in this in this ayahs that I read that this Quran, this book, with its magnificent signs in it, it guides to that which is most right. And it gives glad tidings to those who believe and have faith in God. And it also warns those who choose to reject faith that they will have a horrible punishment. Now, God also says in these ayats, that he doesn't destroy or punish people unjustly. He said, never has he destroyed a town before first or destroyed a people or punished people until first sending a messenger to them and giving them the opportunity to see things that they didn't see before. And once the messenger came, and gave them, rehearsed the clear signs, gave them the warnings, and gave even glad tidings, some still chose after knowing to reject the truth. And so that they wouldn't have the opportunity to say, but I didn't know, he said he gave direct orders to those that he blessed to have some insight or the people he gave the gifts to and he said, hey, he sent a specific direct sign to them and then they still rejected it or refused to do what's right. So thereafter, he punished them and he destroyed those people. God tells us in these ayats, dear believers, that contrary to what some people think, every person God says has their fate fastened to their own neck meaning we are all responsible individually for our actions and our deeds our thoughts our intentions we are responsible my mother my father my brother my sister my friend my imam my preacher my prophet, nobody can pay or, or be held accountable for what I choose to do. There is, in fact, a day of accountability coming for us all where we will be standing, figuratively, standing in front of our Lord with our book of deeds open. And we will have to account to our Lord for what we did or did not do in this life that we should or should not have done, that we were full aware that we should or should not have done. And when that day of accountability comes, no one can bear the responsibility of our actions and our deeds but our own selves. So God says that our fate is fastened to our own necks. And on the day of judgment, you will be brought out with the scroll, which, you, which will be spread open. And we will be instructed to read it. And God says sufficient is your own soul that day to make an account against you. You don't need any other witnesses. You will be a witness to yourself, for yourself, against yourself. And they say, uh, you know, your hands are going to testify against you. And your feet will testify against you. Your eyes will testify against you. And, uh, you know, I used to jokingly say, it's not like your hands are going to automatically grow a mouth and be like, like yeah, God, nah, 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 nah. or, you know, your, your feet are going to be able to talk. But your record will show the things and the actions that your hands produced. 
and your record will show the places that you went into that you had no business in. And your eyes, their record will be, the record will reflect the places where you were looking that you had no business or the, where your nose was in somebody's business that it shouldn't been in. Your record will reflect everything that you did in this life and you will be held and I will be held accountable individually. Some of you may accept this and some of you may reject it. But Allah says, God says, the creator of all things, the Most High says, if you receive guidance, you will receive it for your own benefit. And if you reject it and choose to go astray, ignore it, refuse it, he says you do so to your own loss. Again, no bearer of burdens can bear the burdens of another, nor would I, nor would God send wrath on people until first they have been sent a messenger to give warning. And I think that it is important to note that when you read scripture, when you read Revelation, when you read Quran, and God says until he sends a messenger or until a messenger came to the people or he even refers to a messenger or the messenger. Please understand that God is not only speaking about messengers and prophets that we know of that came before back in time. Please know that whoever is delivering the message to you from God is the messenger that he is speaking of. So right now, I'm serving as the messenger. I am relaying to you God's message. I don't think myself big, holy. I don't have no extra titles. I don't, you know, I'm not special. The only thing special about me uh, over somebody else is maybe I try harder than other people, some people. <laughs> and there are other people who I need to try harder to be more like. But in this instance, I am relaying to you a message from God. The truth is not coming from me. It was coming through me by way of God. It's not my message. It's God's message to us that I'm delivering and I'm praying that we will take it to heart. We will see it as guidance and understand that if we do, the benefit is for our own souls. And if we reject it, then the harm that we do is only to ourselves. And God tells us repeatedly in the Quran of the messengers, including Muhammad the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, May God's, the prayers of peace be upon him. That your job is merely to deliver the message and make sure that it is plain so that they understand it. And to be a example of following the message, of course. But once you have delivered it and made it plain to the people, whatever they do with it is on them. It is not your responsibility. And therefore, if that is true for Muhammad the prophet, if that is true for any of the other messengers and prophets that we know of in the Bible, in the Quran, and any of the scripture through revelation God sent, then it certainly would be true for me as well. My job is only to deliver the message and pray that we will, well, to deliver the message, try to make it as plain as I possibly can to strive to be a living example of someone who has received that message and is striving to, to adhere to it. So God says when those who have faith receive instruction from their Lord, their response is only, I hear and I obey. Right? So that's my responsibility. And I pray that we accept 
this warning from our Lord, as well as good news. Because if we are amongst those who already understand this, are we amongst those who are striving to understand this, or once we have heard it, we will be working to fix or correct ourselves, then God says for those people, those believers who will work righteous deeds, he says to tell you that you will have a magnificent award, reward from your Lord. And we say, Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen, the praises for God, all the praises for God, all the praise be thanks to God, who is the Lord of all of the world. So we pray. Our Lord, let our entry be by the gate of truth and honor and likewise our exit by the gate of truth and honor and grant us from thy presence and authority to aid us forgive us if we forget or fall into error grant us protection against our own shortcomings and faults help us to keep our feet firmly on your straight path cause us to strive as we should be striving Reward us for our striving both in this life as well as in the hereafter. Cause us with the spirit to study your book as it should be studied. Reward us with insights to implement into our daily lives so we might be the men and women you intend for us to be. Grant us the good in this life as well as in the hereafter and save us far from the torment of the fire. Amen. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We seek God's protection against the influences of the shaytan who has been rejected and outcast. With God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Dear believers in the one God. For the second part of uh, my coup by my talk today, I just wanted to say that I pray that. We are all experiencing a fruitful, productive, and transform transformative Ramadan this year. That our fast is going good. That our reading is coming along. That we are able to keep up with our prayers. That we are receiving or feeling the benefit of our constant asking God for his forgiveness, our constant seeking his mercy, and our constant request that he helps us come to understand how we can save ourselves from the penalty of the fire, both in this life and as well as in the hereafter. And I don't want to take too long of a detour, but you know when we say that we ask Allah to protect us against the fire, it's important to understand that some fire is beneficial and some fire consumes and destroys. In fact, even Ramadan is a word that refers to a burning. And so um, it, it is a heat, it's a burning, Ramadan is. And, and, it, and it is a, a fasting in itself, fasting. If you fast long enough, you feel a burning inside your in your in your stomach in your in your inside of you, right? But some fires, what I'm leading to is what Ramadan does, what some fires does, what fasting does. It it helps to burn the impurities, and so some fires are not bad. Some fires are helpful and beneficial because they help to eliminate impurities but there is a fire that is destructive and a fire that consumes and we ask God particularly in this life in this reality to keep us away from the fire that is destructive and that consumes us and that could be the fires of desire 
It could be uh, the fire of passion, the fires of things that lead us away from the soul that is pleasing to our Lord. Uh, the fire of forgetfulness that keeps us moving ourselves in troubled spots. Uh, the fire of our own lower self, etc., etc., etc. But we ask God to keep us, um, help us to figure a way, a strategy, learn a strategy to keep us from the fire that destroys and consumes in this life. And certainly, if we find ourselves consumed and constantly being destructive in this life, then the likelihood is that that's going to be our reality in the hereafter. So, we, we, we pray that we feel the benefit of praying consistently and working so that God will help us restore ourselves, transform ourselves into human beings that are pleasing to him and that are good to our own souls and good and pleasing to our creator, right? And we pray that this Ramadan transforms us, inshallah. I wanted to just note also that if you are experiencing some struggle with your fast this month, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up too bad. Ramadan is not something that happens uh, to come along and then all of a sudden everything is fixed. Everything is changed. And even if you can turn the switch like that after you start getting your bearings adjusting to the fast you may feel yourself slipping back into uh, yourself some of your forgetfulness uh, staying up too late not waking up in time for Fajr uh, forgetting uh, not to eat or drink you know just making mistakes is what I'm saying and some days you will struggle. But alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, even for the struggle. Because it is through the struggle that you learn the keys for your success. Because outside of this month of Ramadan, you certainly will be tested and tried and be presented with a lot of struggles that you have to learn how to overcome. And during this exercise of Ramadan, you, you, are, you are forcing yourself, you are training yourself to be disciplined. And perhaps the struggle that you experience during this month will help build your muscles and your ability to withstand the same struggles once this month is over. So if you're struggling and you're having some hard times, praise be to Allah. It's okay. <laughs> For surely through every difficulty, every, every difficulty, there uh, are keys for your success factored into every difficulty or keys for your success alhamdulillah praise be to Allah so don't don't beat yourself up uh, embrace the struggle and lastly someone uh, texted me today with a sad face because I have friends who are fasting who are not Muslim or people who are fasting for the first time this year and a friend of mine texted me with a sad face and said I slipped and messed up today so I guess I got to start all over tomorrow. Well, you don't have to start over tomorrow. In fact, if you slipped and messed up, if you unconsciously broke your fast, and when, once you consciously realize that you slipped, you simply turn to your Lord, seek his mercy, his forgiveness, and then make your intentions and resume your fast. It is part of this struggle is part of this disciplining ourselves it is part of this conditioning of ourselves if you're if you didn't intentionally break your fast then god will not count this against you i believe i don't believe god will count this against you now ultimately he decides but god's sunnah his his way is consistent with itself and for what I understand about God in Quran is that when his servants are earnestly striving where they fall in error unintentionally, 
he says that he is all forgiving, most merciful, that he is quick in extending his mercy to you, particularly when you recognize it and you seek to fix it. So turn to your Lord. If you fall, you slip, you make a mistake, ask for his forgiveness and for him to strengthen you and resume your fast. And God willing, we will all see the benefits soon. So, dear believers, we pray that the re remainder of your Ramadan is peaceful, that it is fruitful, and that it is transformational. And inshallah, we all are blessed to leave this month of Ramadan uh, new, new people, new souls, fresh souls, renewed souls, ready uh, to be obedient servants to our Lord and reap the benefits for that in this life as well as in the hereafter and we pray our lord forgive us if we forget a fall in the error grant us protection against our shortcomings and faults help us to keep our feet firmly on your straight path cause us to study your book as it should be studied reward us for our studying in this life with, with excuse me with insights to implement into our daily lives and cause us to strive as we should strive and reward us for our striving in this life as well as in the hereafter, and save us far from the penalty of the fire. Amen. Assalamu alaikum family. I was asked to remind you guys that even though we find ourselves in a position where we can't be at the masjid, we can't come here every Friday uh, right now because of the um, COVID-19, we still have some financial responsibilities in, in terms of bills that have to be paid. And so I was asked to remind you to still please uh, consider sending in your charity zakat or pledges, whatever the case may be, so that we can keep the bills paid. So if you could please kindly still send in your pledges, zakat, charity, or whatever it is you normally would give, uh, we really would appreciate it. And momentarily, uh, I will give you the electronic means by which to send those to us uh, if you don't already have them. All right. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Love you all. You can either send in your uh, charity zakat or donations or pledges uh, by sm snail mail to Al Haq Islamic Center. 6941 Prospect, Kansas City, Missouri, 64132. Or you can cash app us, which is the most popular way of doing things these days. You can cash app us at cash app, which is dollar sign Al Hawk IC, dollar sign A L H A Q Q I C. Or you can PayPal us, which you would go to paypal.me paypal.me slash al Haq Islamic Center and you can send us money via PayPal or you can always direct deposit us through Commerce Bank and the routing number is 10100019 or the account and, oh, excuse me and the account number is 30227 that's routing number 101 zero 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 one nine and accounting number i mean account number three zero two two seven um yeah those are ways that you can send in your cash donations well, they wouldn't be cash oh, your donations your pledges your zakat or your sadaqa and we really would greatly appreciate it so we can keep our bills paid, keep our lights on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, NPI insurance paid, you know, stuff we got to do. But thank you very much. Uh, I'm rambling. It's Hollywood. Not my fault. I'll have my regular glasses next week. Inshallah. I'm always forgetting them. But anyway, Sister Leah, you know, you know I'll be forgetting stuff. You know I'll forget. All right. My bad. Love you, mama. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, be professional. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.